I'm Brett, I'm a psychic medium, and today I'm going to talk about how to survive as an empath. Because it's difficult if you're an empath. How can you tell if you're an empath? Like, what is an empath? An empath is a clairsentient. That means you're feeling the world around you. You're feeling emotions, you're feeling thinking, you're feeling like physical sensations, you're feeling the energy around you, you're feeling it like touching, that kind of feeling, and you're also feeling internal stuff. When you're an empath, you're picking up on a lot of stuff that's not your stuff. So you're picking up on other people's emotions, thoughts, feelings. You're picking up on environmental stuff. Um, you might go into a room and feel anger. And it's because somebody that just left that room was having an argument with somebody. You might pick that up. You might pick up a vibe of an area. And that might be a place where a murder has occurred. You might be feeling that energy right there. So being an empath is not an easy thing when you don't recognize that it's not your energy or your feelings, your stuff. When you're an empath, it's difficult to be in crowds a lot of times because you're picking up on everybody's stuff, everybody's junk. When you're at a concert, you're gonna feel all of that excitement and the happiness and it's palpable. I mean, you feel it, everybody feels it. Um, you're gonna feel it more if you're an empath. If you're in a place with crowds and there's a lot of conflict going on between like two groups, you're going to feel that anger and that animosity. You're going to pick up on that. And it's really difficult to tell whether it's your animosity or somebody else's. Something else you might be picking up on is the collective feelings. So this is the, you know, going to a concert or being in a crowd somewhere. This is those kind of feelings but you're picking it up from just society in general. And right now we've got all sorts of high emotions. We've got illness, we've got worry, we've got concern. We've got all of this stuff going on and we're gonna be picking up on that. And that's gonna be lumped on top of our own personal feelings that are a lot of the same thing. So it's just gonna be exponentially more difficult for us. Something else about identifying it is usually the negative things are the things you're going to identify. Those are the things you're going to pick up on because hopefully our normal baseline operating state is joy or happiness. And so when something like that happens or comes in, that's not an obvious thing. It's, that's not a problem either. So we don't notice that. When it's sad, when it's angry, when it's unsettling, when it is physical illness, um, that's when it's something to notice and try to deal with. Try to make sure that you aren't taking that on. Physical illness is also another thing that an empath might take on. So you might actually feel the sickness of somebody that you're close to. You might actually take on the symptoms. That's another thing where you need to notice it and say, okay, these aren't mine, and break that connection, break that chain. And if you notice that this is something that is persistent, you're constantly having these feelings, or you actually have a loved one who is sick with some sort of very specific issue, and you realize that you're taking that on, you need to definitely cut off that energy because it's not helpful for you to also be sick. It's not helpful for you also to be sad. You can empathize with the person, but you don't have to be empathic about it and actually take it on. I guess I should be saying you can sympathize with the person, but you don't have to actually have that feeling. Being sad or angry for somebody else doesn't necessarily help whatever the situation is. Being clear, being calm, being cool-headed is a much better way to um, move through life. You have a whole lot more control that way. 
So how do you deal with these feelings when they come up? I think the biggest thing, the most important thing is to be able to identify it as not yours. When you're suddenly angry and it's like there's no reason for it, there was nothing that would cause you to be angry, uh, that's a big key and a big flag to tell you it's probably not yours. So um, if you're feeling sad for no reason, there's nothing, there was no antecedent that might be a big flag that it's not yours. You might be picking up on something in the environment or somebody else's feelings. So yeah, identifying it is the biggest thing. And when you identify it, you can just basically go, okay, that makes no sense. So I don't think that's mine. And I think when you're picking up on it psychically, I think just being able to identify it is enough where you can break the connection with it. Like you'll automatically just be like, okay, I'm not feeling sad anymore. That was weird. Or I'm not angry anymore or whatever the unpleasant feeling is. When it's happiness that you're picking up on, it's not so much of a problem. It's kind of like bring it on. I'm fine with picking up on this happiness. Joy is good. So. If you're feeling something and it's persistent, you want to change that energy. You want to deal with that energy because all of this stuff coming in, it's just energy. So you want to be able to deal with it. And there are ways to deal with it. I've done things about cutting cords. That's something where the energy is a little further off. It's separate from you. It's definitely more external. But there are things where some of what you might be picking up might be an attachment. It might be something in your aura or something that's closer to you that you need to deal with. You might have to have that entity moved. Another way to deal with that energy is to ground it out. And you can use whatever grounding technique you know. Uh, usually it has to do with attaching a cord or an anchor or I see roots. It's attaching this to your root chakra or your feet or your seat and having it go deep into the ground. A lot of people have it going to the center of the earth and wrapping and tying to the center of the earth and pulling to you. And basically when you're doing this, or at least with me, when I ground, I can actually feel myself pull down. Like right now, I'm thinking about grounding and I'm feeling myself getting snugger to the ground. And that's like, I'm physically feeling that. And so that's one way to deal with the energy and it allows the energy to come in and go down and out. And I picture myself as a tree. I've got a trunk and then I've got roots going from my feet into the ground, deep into the ground and spreading out and pulling me down and holding me to the ground. And anything that comes in can basically go directly into the ground and be grounded out into the earth. That's an easy way to take energy coming in and remove it. So with my tree technique, I do the roots for grounding and then I've got my torso as the trunk of the tree and then branches that go up into the sky or out into the environment. And those are how I bring in energy or connect with the spirit world or whatever. And so when we're being bombarded, we don't necessarily need to focus on those branches. We need to just focus on grounding and getting that stuff out into the ground, getting that energy grounded. Another way to get rid of this energy or to let it dissipate is through visualization. And, and I mean, the grounding is visualization, but there are other ways to visualize this. So you can just see it as basically steam or something coming off of you. You can see it as a cloud just dissipating. You can see it as butterflies going away. Just basically through intention, you visualize what you want to happen. You go, okay, I'm feeling anger. Let's let that anger go. And if you visualize it as a bunch of butterflies just floating away from you, it does wonders. It's pretty amazing. Um, we're pretty powerful people, pretty powerful people. Okay, as an empath, how can you protect yourself? How do you keep from getting all of this junk? 
Uh, the main thing I recommend is to use a shield or a bubble. And this is also done through visualization. You basically see a force field around you and it needs to go over your head and it needs to go under your feet and completely surrounding you. A shield will protect you from other people's emotions, other people's feelings, or even an environment. So if you're feeling uncomfortable in an environment, you can put up this shield and it will keep that stuff off of you, or it'll definitely help. If you aren't used to doing this, you might actually feel claustrophobic with it when you first try it. So you might have to lessen it or strengthen it or give it very specific requirements. Like this takes away unnecessary or unwanted emotional input from others. You can really be specific with your intention for it. And you basically do this, especially like before you go into a crowded place. If you know or expect to be bombarded with this, you wanna put this up and that will keep these emotions from coming in through your shield and getting to you. And then grounding is big because anything that comes in will be grounded out. It won't have a chance to like hang on to you or you won't empathically absorb it. So that's another thing. Grounding, shields, talk to your team, talk to your spirit guides, tell them exactly what you need, exactly what you want because they aren't allowed to step in unless you ask them explicitly. So if I'm noticing that I'm connecting to something that's not mine, I ask my guides to step in and help. Guides keep me safe. I don't wanna feel this. I don't wanna feel uncomfortable in this situation. And they can usually come in and they will help break the connection, break that feeling. So what are some practical ways of protecting yourself as an empath? Avoidance, <laughs> avoidance is big. You don't go places that make you feel uncomfortable. You avoid energy vampires, you avoid psychic vampires. It's weird, with energy vampires, they often don't know what they're doing. They don't realize that they're taking other people's energy or projecting their energy on somebody else. And usually it's a push and pull with, with them and just by employing some of these steps, putting up shields, making sure you're aware of what's going on, that can actually fix the relationship between you. And if it doesn't fix the relationship, maybe you don't need to be around that person anymore, or you need to limit how you interact with them. Avoid this stuff. I know it's a sacrifice, but if you wanna feel better, you have to avoid behaviors that are going to cause you discomfort or cause you to, yeah, discomfort. People will also employ symbols like religious symbols and through intention you can give that extra power to keep you protected from whatever. I mean, it's weird. The things we can do through intention, we can create things that actually will take care of our problems for us. People will also use gems or stones like tourmaline or something like that to affect the energy coming in or coming at them or use it as protection. I don't know enough about the different kinds of stones. I have the very specific kinds that I use, but I don't use them necessarily for empathic protection. Like black tourmaline, I use just as a general protection. And I've had energy come at me and had black tourmaline explode. Like I'm holding it in my hand and it explodes. I've had that happen twice. And I don't know what kind of energy was coming at me, but it's a protection. So being an empath means that you need to accept this about yourself. You need to stand up for yourself. You need to do what's right for you. You need to, you know, be your person. You do you. Right? How do you talk to other people about your needs as an empath? That one's tough. You I mean you gotta stand up for yourself and you gotta be open and honest with people and you gotta be like, yeah, this makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it this way. I am sensitive. I do pick up on this stuff. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're we're dealing with this stuff and 
I think a lot of people would understand this if they would accept it. I mean, really, most people are empathic. This is one of our psychic abilities that we retain because we're allowed to have feelings. We're allowed to feel certain ways the same way that if you hear voices or if you see people that aren't there, that's where authority figures tell us that we aren't supposed to do that. I have a squirrel looking at me, watching me do this thing. This is awesome. I'll have to insert some squirrel footage. So when you're explaining to other people what it's like to be an empath and what it's like to feel all of this energy and explain your needs and like why you don't want to go to this thing, like why crowds make you uncomfortable, that might just open up that other person and they'll be like, oh, that's what's going on with me. That's why I feel this way. That's why I'm having these experiences also. So how do you benefit from being empathic? One thing is that you realize what other people are feeling and you can actually sympathize with them or understand where people are coming from because you can tell what's going on. You can also feel things in your environment. You can feel things around you. And this might be actually feeling it kind of like an atmospheric pressure or something like that. Like I will just know when folks are around, when there are invisible folks or living folks a lot of times. Um, I can feel it. That's being an empath. You can pick up on like the feeling of an environment. So if you go somewhere where something crazy has happened, you might be able to pick up on the feelings of what happened. You can definitely understand where people are coming from. You can understand that, oh, there was a fight in this room before I got here, or these people are angry. You can get a better feeling of that. You can basically read people a little bit better as an empath. If you've got these kind of skills, it's easy to just start paying attention to that and then start paying attention to images that you might be picking up in your head or little things you might be hearing in your head. And then you can incorporate your empathic ability with other psychic senses because they'll help validate each other. So that's one way you can build on your empathic abilities to become more psychic. And I think that's it. So if you've gotten anything out of this, please subscribe, please like, comment, share with others. And I would like to know your tips and tricks with being an empath. Like, how do you deal with it? And thanks for watching. <coughs> Ahem. <clears throat>